there's been much talk about the savings the United Kingdom will make from leaving the European Union. And during the Brexit referendum, the idea that there'd be £350 million extra for the NHS was probably an important important issue in the, in the actual pattern of voting. Uh, more recently, the European Commission has leaked a claim for €60 billion Euros as the divorce bill uh, for, the United, for the United Kingdom to leave. Now, that sounds a very, a very large number, and it's obviously very much an, open, uh, an opening bid. But what I want to argue is that the actual divorce bill isn't of itself very important. Uh, the divorce is big. Uh, the United Kingdom has been a member of the European Union for 40, will have been a member for 47 years. And much of, much of what we understand as the way of public policy works in the UK owes a lot to the European framework. Uh, but the, so the divorce is big, but the bill, is, the bill isn't. Uh, the United Kingdom's annual con net contributions to the European Union are actually 7 billion, which is 1% of total annual UK public expenditure. So the bill isn't actually that important of itself, certainly nothing like as important as the, the question of the future relationship of the United Kingdom with the European Union, particularly in terms of, particularly in terms of trade and whether the United Kingdom wants to participate in some European Union programmes, for example, in, case, in the context of research or student, or student exchange. Uh, the way the U European Union runs its finances is quite alien uh, to people who are, who are used to kind of United Kingdom finances. The key, I key issue in the European Union is the seven-year multi-annual financial framework, which runs from 2014 to 2020. And that means there's two years left uh, when left in that multi-annual framework when the UK leaves. So quite a bit of that 60 billion euro bill is about what happens after the UK leaves in March 2019. So the question for the UK is how to handle the bill given the toxicity of the issue of the UK not making, quote, vast contributions to Brussels, end quote, anymore. So... What, what are the implications for Scotland? Well, the implications for Scotland are actually really quite, really quite serious. Uh, the UK has struggled to recover from the 2008 global financial crisis. And th the years of austerity, which started around 2009, have extend are going to extend into the 2020s. And there's also the question of whether a United Kingdom government will wish to shrink the state further. So there'll be there'll be reduction, further reductions in UK public in Scotland Scottish public spending coming through the Barnett formula. The other issue of real importance is how how the, the money that Scotland currently receives from EU programmes is actually replaced. At one extreme, there might be no re might be no replacement at all, but that's that's politically impl politically implausible. So the que the question the question then is how 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 the future obligations in areas like agriculture and fisheries are going are going to be financed. And one of the things we're going to hear much more about is the about the internal UK market, and that will be used as an argument for centralising certain decision making in London, rather than having it devolved to Scotland, to Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. There is also the question that that concerns me: is that people are assuming that the UK will continue to receive a substantial amount of net receipts? Because the net liabilities bill of 60 billion is actually reduced by the fact of the future EU receipts. Now, some of those receipts are semi-automatic in the context of common agricultural policy payments, but some of it is not. Some of it depends upon, upon public bodies, uh, local authorities and the private sector, including universities, actually making bids on a competitive basis. And there is obviously a worry that given all the publicity about leaving the European Union, people will be not be very motivated to actually put the effort in to apply for funds. So there's a kind of significant financial risk to the United Kingdom and a significant financial risk to Scotland as well.